Um, my name's Wayne Lynch. I've been shaping boards for approximately 53 years or 54 years. Um, I'm now um, doing fins through Glide as well as still continuing to shape, of course. And, um, yeah, so have a little look at the fins. Uh, I've known Mark and John for a, a very long time. Mark, pretty much my whole life. He grew up in Torquay, so even though I grew up in Lawn, um, you know, we knew each other from, from surfing, of course. Johnny, oh, he's been there for many years now. I don't know how many, but he came over from New Zealand. And um, so I've just known him. He's, he's been doing ding repairs and all sorts of things in, in surfing, in surfboard uh, construction for years. Um, he's, he's a perfectionist. Uh, so he often made my fins just one fin at a time because he was so good at it. I'd get him to, you know, just come up with an idea and I'd go around and say, John, can you make this? So he would. Um, you know, as I say, he's a perfectionist, so well, both of them are. So it's great to work with them for, from that point of view. Um, being from what you might call the old school of surfing, you know, we wanted everything absolutely perfect because it really does make a difference, you know, whether it's the foil, uh, the flex, Everything in a fin has to be working properly to, to get the most out of it. And I think people really underestimate what a fin does to a surfboard. Um, in this new era of, of sort of mass production and whatever else, it, it's sort of lost. The education has been lost. People don't realise how important the fin is, whether it's the size, the shape, position. Um, you know, there's a lot to it. It takes years and years and years of, of constant uh, trial to work out what does go better and, you know, and what's appropriate. Uh, I, I think there's a bit of a lack of respect for what it does take as well. Um, as I say, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for a long time, over 50 years, and I can't say I, I, I've got it where... Uh, I think it can't be improved or anything like that, anything but, really. But certainly uh, a lot of the, the bugs have been worked out through that period. Trial and error and, error and, and, and frustration. I mean, what it takes to actually find out what works and what doesn't is enormous. Uh, you know, there were periods where I, I just about felt depressed. It was so... It was just impossible to work it out. You'd, you'd think something was going to work and it would, could be the worst thing you've done. So all that process and all those years and, 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 and sometimes I get a little bit frustrated because, you know, the marketing in surfing, in surfing now just directs people toward certain products that really aren't that good. So I think uh, with Glide, they're really making an effort to, to change that and to make sure the product is as good as it can get. For instance, the, the fins are made out of fiberglass. They're not moulded. There's no plastic in the fin. It's, it's a laid up fin panel and then sanded, it's sanded by hand. So that in itself in this day and age is quite rare. And the difference is phenomenal. The type of flex that's in the fin, uh, how long the fin will last, on and on and on, you know, it, it, it means something. It, it's, it's a very integral part of making a fin as good as you can possibly make it. Uh, so firstly, this is a fin combination that I've been doing for a number of years. Um, um, as you can see, it's, it's in the traditional clear uh, fin. Uh, I find it's better without pigment in the, in the resin. The fins seem to be stronger. Uh, the flex seems to be um, much stronger. The, 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 the return from the flex has more life in it. So um, I've gone to all clear fins for that reason. Um, this combination is something that I really love, especially on big waves. Uh, 
Uh, you just the little side fins just give you that little bit more grip than the traditional single fin. Even though sometimes I do ride these boards without the side fins, mostly I prefer the side fins. It, it, it just gives you that grip. It's a little bit like having a tri fin with with a lot more forward momentum and direction. Um, and on a bigger wave, that's a really important component of your board, I think. Um, you know, you're drawing big long arcs and you, you, you're just driving a lot of the time. You're not really just turning like on a smaller wave. So these I'm using in a whole range of boards uh, from six foot to nine foot six. Um, you know, from small waves right up into the big, you know, really big surf. I prefer to ride this type of board and this type of fin in waves from around about six foot up. If I'm going to use it, I still use tri fins and everything as well. But um, this is a nice 7 2 gun. Um, in many ways, traditional, been refined since the early years, since the 70s. Same, same sort of uh, plan shape that I always used, but you know, the bottom rockers and the, and the, and the bottom shapes and all that are much more uh, refined. But, um, and again, you know, the, the, the fins are really, really lively. They're beautiful, the flex is, it's not soft and spongy. And, and again, and that's what's really important. Uh, placement on fins is really important. And, and again, it's been, for me, trial and error over a, a long period of time. But I always put a, a box in my single fins just so you've got that little bit of movement. It's not a long box. Um, so there's not a lot of turbulence, you know, with a big, long, open section. But everybody's different. And sometimes, you know, uh, guys or, or ladies prefer the fin right forward, sometimes further back, especially when you don't have the side fins. Uh, I prefer my fin a little bit further forward. It, it frees up the tail. But... When people ask me, I go set it up at this position, which is basically the leading edge in alignment with the uh, trailing edge on the side fins. Try it like that. If the board feels a bit stiff or a bit too loose, then you move it forward or back, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, some guys don't really want to muck around. They go, oh, God, I, I'm not a good enough surfer to know that. And I go, you are. You always are because it's a very, very obvious change in the feeling of the board. So and I love to get people to get involved with their own surfing and their own boards. You know, it, it's, it's an enriching process. It's, it's about understanding. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the things I found about fins of any um, combination or style, whether it be a tri-fin, four-fin, or, or this this setup, is that I think the fin, it's hard to be specific, but I would say it's 30 to 40% how the board goes. It's that important. It's huge. It makes all the difference. It can make what feels a bad board, a really good board, and vice versa. And that's why I'm so um, almost pedantic about fins, always have been, and, and why I talk to people about fins all the time as well, and placement. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's really important. It's integral to the way the board goes. So um, for anybody, you know, that's, that's watching this or, or, or is trying to work it all out for themselves, keep going because it, if you've got a board that you're not exactly happy with, well, it could be the fin. Size, position, more than anything, size, um, especially in a tri-fin. You know, for uh, a, a bigger guy, he needs bigger fins. For bigger waves, you need bigger fins. For smaller waves, smaller fins. Basic stuff, really. But it, it's not a, something that people are being educated with, generally speaking, in surfing anymore. And including in surf shops, which is almost um, extraordinary, I find, that, that that sort of knowledge isn't being, uh, you know, handed on to the customer. 
when I'm designing fins, I don't really um, draw a fin out a lot. Occasionally I do, but really it's about a feeling. Um, you know, whatever fins I'm, I'm using at the time, if I feel there's something lacking, or there may be a way to enhance that, you know, the board or whatever, um, I'll just go and draw the fin out. But it's not, it's usually just bigger or smaller or a little bit more vertical or a little bit more laid back in, in its in its angle. Uh, I suppose in a way it's not very scientific. It's really about, it's really about a feeling and that's what surfing is about. Um, it's, it's how it feels. It's not so much how it looks, which is a, in contest it is, but you know, 95% of us all surf to a feeling. So really you, and, and as the years go by and you, you've, you've had a lot more experience, you, that feeling I'm talking about becomes a little bit intuitive. And you go, oh yeah, I think that fin's a bit too small or it needs a bit of this or that or there's too much flex, that sort of thing. So really, you know, it's only about going and getting it made and then trying it. And I think that's what I was getting at earlier about how much work goes in to developing something because you, you, you make it, it fails or you make it again to make it even better again. And, and that process can take months and years. Um, we don't have the luxury of having access to tank testing and things like that that, that yacht designers have because it's so expensive. Um, that would be very interesting. It's something I've always wanted to do because mm -hmm. I do have ideas about fins and I can't prove or test uh, that idea because to make it would cost a lot of money. So if you could make up a prototype and have a look at the way the water's flowing, it would be fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, that side of surfing is still quite crude, if that's the word, way to put it. It's just not the money in it. You know, so um, we have to rely on our own resources. Uh, right now, I've, we've just moved uh, where we live, uh, and I haven't got a workshop, but we're setting it up, and I'll be back shaping and surfing, I hope, very shortly. So. This process of surfboard development and things will carry on.